Hey, good evening, afternoon, morning, wherever you are. Passophobia has been sweeping across Twitch and YouTube, and for good reason. I want to talk about what makes Phasmophobia good, talk about how it works, and maybe about potential problems or challenges the game faces. And I want to talk about ways that I think it can improve. I do want to preface this with I have nothing but admiration and respect for the sole developer working on this game. What they've done is honestly amazing and mind-boggling, It's and everyone has to recognize it. When it comes to breaking down the core features of the game, I think I can summarize it with three main parts. Part 1 is the horror element, part 2 is the puzzle element, and part 3 is the random element. The random element is closely tied with the other elements as well, but it's so important that I think it should have its own dedicated part in the video. I do want to make an honorable mention to the co-op aspects of the game. I'm not going to do a deep dive right now into what social interaction does for a game, as I don't have the research at hand and the tools equipped to fully explain it. Uh, but adding cooperative or competitive aspects to a game, social elements in general, can instantly transform it into a much better game simply by virtue of the fact that people like interacting with each other. Games like Among Us, Town of Salem, Werewolf, stuff like that are good examples of this. So the first major element I'll go into is the horror aspect. This one is pretty obvious. The game has many systems working together in order to scare players effectively. Uh, light, for example, is a very valuable resource in the game, and people don't like it when it's taken away. Phasmophobia has a dim light around the player at all times. That's just for the player uh, locally, so that they could see the ground or things that they are rubbing up against. Uh, but other than that, they have to fend for their fend for themselves with light to try and find a flashlight or use a flashlight or have a candle or something like that or light switches in the house. The game does an excellent job on the lighting side in order to create that horror atmosphere, while also making sure that the players don't get completely lost. On the other end of the atmosphere, the audio is also done excellently, from the sound of footsteps, the creaky doors, the droning background when you enter the house. I want to make a special shout out to the clock that ticks irregularly. Not only does this instill a sense of urgency, and that the clock is ticking, you better hurry up. But it ticks irregularly. Why this is so important is because if it did tick regularly, your mind would very easily be able to just count it as background noise. You know, if we take that droning sound, for example, it's pretty loud, but you don't really notice it unless you either just entered the house or just left the house because all of a sudden it got louder or it got quieter. But because it ticks irregularly, it's constantly being brought to your attention so that you're constantly being reminded that the clock is ticking. And I think that's honestly genius. I love it. That said, the game has some issues when it comes to immersion, part of which is, actually all of which is probably because it's made by one person. The animations and visuals at times can rip people out of the immersion, as it's pretty ridiculous and funny to uh, see your friend walking around with their back bent backwards 90 degrees. Uh, and while it is bad for immersion, it's not necessarily bad for the game, you know? It's funny. It's fun. It adds to the co-op element, uh, you know, when you're just hanging out with friends and you want to have a good time. I could go on about the systems that make the game scary, but I don't really want to make this video last 40 minutes. Uh, I do want to point, point out, however, that there is a very important element that's related to horror that is essential to this game being as popular as it is. And that is the fear of the unknown. So when I first played this game, I went in as blind as I could. I had seen about 15 minutes of gameplay, uh, but what was spoiled to me was that when the lights are flickering is when the ghost is on the hunt, so you have to hide. Which is a pretty big spoil, when you think about it. When new players play this game for the first time, the fear of the unknown shines through them as they react to things they have never seen or heard before. And this has led to thousands and thousands of videos and streams of people getting the absolute shit scared out of them. <laughs> and it's fantastic entertainment, but it's also amazing advertisement for the game. If you've ever played a horror game for the first time with no information on it, you know how it feels. While this is such a strong element that supports the game, the fear of the unknown is something that's naturally lost to any player who's learning the game learning the rules of the game and becomes experienced. You still see those experienced players get scared by the other elements of the game, but nothing will ever match those first few playthroughs. 
This is something I will come back to near the end of this video in the potential improvements section, but for now I think it's time to move on. So the second major element in the game is the puzzle element. Phasmophobia at its core is a puzzle game. Players are tasked with using their equipment to look for evidence in order to deduce what type of ghost they are dealing with. There are six different types of evidence you can find and 12 different types of ghosts that can spawn. Each ghost has a unique combination of three of those six evidence types, and once you find all three, you have nailed down the ghost you are dealing with. There is an extra layer to this, though, uh, as each ghost has some unique behavior that could help you identify it. For example, the phantom in, is unique in that it disappears when somebody tries to take a flashlight, uh, take a photo of it. All right. To find this evidence, players must use the equipment they have, and upon successfully completing challenges, they earn money, which they could spend at an in-game store. And at that store, they could buy items that increase quality of life by a lot. For example, when you start playing the game, the only way to observe freezing temperatures is by looking at your breath, is by seeing your breath in a cold room. However, for $30, you can buy a thermometer, which can visually show you temperature readings. This can be used to not only spot the freezing temperatures and have them displayed to you, but to also locate the ghost room more quickly as the ghost naturally cools down the room it is haunting. A nice part of the puzzle game is that as you find evidence, you narrow down what other evidence you have to look for. For example, if evidence 1 is spirit box and evidence piece 2 is EMF level 5, you have narrowed it down to two possible ghosts. I think it's Jin and Oni, don't quote me. That means that instead of having four remaining pieces of evidence to look for, you only have two to look for. I've seen players, I've seen a lot of players feel very rewarded for figuring this out on their own, as it's not something that's explicitly told to players, so they have to deduce that fact on their own. There are a few challenges that players are faced when solving these puzzles, though. Firstly, let's talk about sanity. Players' sanity will drop over time as they are inside the building. After sanity has reached a low enough point, the ghosts will start going on hunts. The lower the sanity of the player, the more often that ghost will hunt, and during the hunt is the only time that the ghosts can kill players. This is vital as it's what introduces risk into the game. Once the ghost starts hunting, players constantly have to think about risk versus reward if they want to keep searching, keep going in. As if they die, they lose any equipment they had purchased and brought into the map. The actions that players must take each round is first, find the room the ghost is haunting. There are multiple ways to find this room, either listening for actions from the ghosts, a phone ringing, footsteps, picking up EMF readings, observing lower temperatures, etc. There are a bunch of ways. Second, bring equipment into that room to find evidence. Third, document that evidence, deduce what type of ghost it is, and get out. All in all, the puzzle itself is pretty simple. The third element of this game is randomness. This ties closely in with other elements in order to make the game scarier and much more replayable. Randomness is a beast to wrangle, but as a developer, I think that the developer did very well in using randomness to benefit their game a lot, albeit with a few hiccups here and there. Firstly, the room that the ghost spawns in is random. This fact creates a lot of replayability in and of itself in that the time it takes to find the ghost is different every single match. This is less influential on small maps, but in the school or asy asylum it is a big deal. A game in which you find the ghost in the first classroom on the right will play a heck of a lot differently than a game in which it takes 10 minutes to find the ghost and they are on the opposite corner of the map. You not only have to deal with 10 minutes of lost sanity, you have to also bring your equipment and it takes much more time to do that. So overall, the stress factor of that match will be much higher and players will feel at greater risk of losing any investment that they brought in. Another way randomness is used is the actions that the ghost takes. If you are inside or near their ghost room, uh, you could see or hear a variety of effects that can scare you. You know, the ghost could breathe down your neck, they could close the door, they could pop up in front of you, they could turn the lights off. And that's really just the AI doing its thing uh, to scare you through not necessarily jump scares, but they act like jump scares sometimes. An important way randomness is used is with how quickly the ghost shows specific types of evidence. Most types of evidence rely on the ghost giving it to the player. With one exception being ghost orbs, as far as I know. Uh, I think if you just set up cameras, you know, the ghost orbs will either be there or they won't. 
Ghosts often do not immediately give evidence to players, so the player must wait for the ghost to kind of give it up to them. For example, some ghosts will start the game with freezing temperatures. You'll Once you find the room, the temperatures will be freezing, and you'll write that down and move on. However, sometimes it takes the ghosts a long time to get to freezing temperatures. It can take a long time for ghosts to get to EMF level 5 or to write in the book. Therenomous is definitely a double-edged sword here, though as there are times when players just get frustrated with the lack of progress, as it might take the ghosts 10 or more minutes to perform a single action to write in the book or to put fingerprints anywhere. I've seen players stop getting annoyed, or stop getting scared and start getting annoyed, saying things like, oh, can we move on already, and stuff like that. However, this does ensure that the puzzle-solving experience is different each playthrough, even if dealing with the same ghost both times. As a quick note as well, each game, players get three random extra objectives that they can complete for bonus cash, uh, which will have players performing different actions, adding to the replayability as well. So while randomness at times can be frustrating, it is the core reason in my eyes that the game is so successful. Without it, puzzle solving would be bland and the game would feel incredibly repetitive. Now how could this game improve? I will say this is purely speculative, and it's possible that this has been thought of before, um, and it's good to note that it's very hard, if not impossible, to imagine what a change will do to a game without actually building it and testing it, which is why rapid prototyping is such an important thing. Regardless, I want to focus on something I mentioned earlier in the video, the fear of the unknown. This is something that is, for the most part, completely lost to any players who become experienced with the game. They know the rules and have expectations and know what actions the ghost can take throughout the game. I have never seen a horror game manage to keep the fear of the unknown for their players, but I wonder if it's possible here. I've seen a player, for example, react to the flashing uh, lights, asking if their flashlight was out of battery, uh, and they quickly learned what it meant, uh, and they were very scared. And I've seen players just completely freak out at a single footstep, me included, just because I don't know what it means. Is it possible to at least keep any of that unknown? I think it might be. This hinges on the fact that the game has a set of rules. Obviously, it's a game. Games have rules. Some of those rules are, for example, one, the ghost can only kill you during a hunt, and two, the lower your sanity is, the more often the ghost hunts. Those, those are two rules we're going to look at. But what happens when we break those rules? This is something that's very dangerous to do, especially for players who have not yet fully mastered the game mechanics. If someone had just learned or is learning that the flickering of the lights mean that the ghost is entering a hunt, and in that hunt, they can die. They learn that they die when the lights are flickering. Now, all of a sudden, if they learn that and go into the next match and die without the lights flickering, they will be confused and possibly frustrated, and we really don't want that. So at the very least, this would have to be locked and gated to the professional tier, if not an expert tier or something like that, even above professional. So let's break those two rules and theorize. What if the ghost could kill you without entering a hunt? Or maybe if you provoked it enough in its room, it could just snap and enter an immediate hunt and kill somebody there. We could balance this by saying something like, if a ghost can kill people or if hunt immediately upon provocation, that they cannot kill people in a normal hunt. All of a sudden, another unknown is introduced into the game each match. Players do not know if it's a good idea or a horribly bad idea to provoke the ghost. This would in theory keep players on edge, and to be very careful about not overstepping their boundaries, and there is now an information checkpoint that they could reach. Either they have to make sure they don't stay in the ghost room too long as to avoid getting the ghost too aggravated at once, or they want to stay in the room as long enough as long as possible while their sanity is still high, which is pretty much the normal game. So that kind of flips the game on its head a little bit. But once they know what action the ghosts take, they know which path to respond with, and the game can proceed. Another rule that we can break is the sanity rule. What if, for example, the rule is flipped? A ghost is most likely to hunt when sanity is at 100%. This would dramatically change how players approach the beginning of the game. Instead of safely roaming around the map without a care in the world, uh, they would be on edge so that if a hunt triggered, they would be able to hide very quickly. The goal from then on out is to lower your sanity as quickly as possible so that the ghost stops hunting so frequently or stops hunting overall. I think there'd have to be something under the hood 
to make sure that it is rare for people to die on the first hunt so that they don't instant instantly lose a bunch of gear that they brought in. Uh, but overall, it would have players approaching the map very differently, and it would just change the game completely, I think, in an interesting way. So there are plenty of rules the game has established. I looked at two, and I'm very curious to see what would happen to the game if we broke those two. Even if it was a rare occurrence, just the fact that those rules could be broken would always be at the back of players' minds and keep them more tense and hopefully more scared. Thank you so much for watching. Catch my streams at twitch.tv slash godlikeonline. I'm super curious about what you think about this video and if I should do more videos of this style, so please let me know in the comments below or live on my stream. I'd appreciate a follow on my stream and a subscribe and like here if you haven't already so that I can keep doing what I love to do. Have a good one. Cheers.